Hi friends, today we are going to start dot unit Thodolite, which is very important in surveying. And basically, Thodolite instrument is used to measure the horizontal angle and vertical angles. And along with this, Thodolite having the various uses. So today we are going to see one by one what is construction of the Thodolite and how you are going to use Thodolite for the various purposes. Okay, in civil engineering. First. We have to see the various technical terms in a light. So those are those terms are similar to the compass also, prismatic compass. So first is a meridian. Meridian is nothing but a direction. And along with the direction, we are going to measure the angles. And here you are going to call it angle is a bearing. Okay. So meridian is nothing but angle. And sorry, meridian is nothing but a direction. And second is a true meridian. What is true meridian? Earth having the four poles actually. One is a geographical north pole, geographical south pole, magnetic north pole, and magnetic south pole. Okay, so true meridian is the line which is connecting the geographical north pole and geographical south pole of the earth and passing from any point on the surface of the earth. That line is called as a true meridian. Okay, next is a magnetic meridian. Magnetic meridian is a direction. So when a magnetic needle is freely suspended, the direction shown by the magnetic needle, that direction is called as a magnetic meridian. Next is the arbitrary meridian. Any convenient direction the surveyor is going to choose at the time of measuring the angle, that direction is called as arbitrary meridian. And next is a grid meridian. Grid meridians means sometimes some state agencies for some work they are going to take some lines which are parallel to the true meridians. Such lines are called as a grid meridian. And we have to measure the bearings also, that is angles. So when you are going to measure the angle from true meridian towards the survey line, true meridian towards the survey line, that angle is called as a true bearing. And when we are going to measure the angle for magnetic meridians, toward the survey line that angle is called as a magnetic bearing and arbitrary angles when we are going to measure the angle between arbitrary meridians toward the survey line that angle is a arbitrary bearing and when you are going to measure the angle from grid meridian toward the survey line that is a grid bearing so there are various, various designation of the magnetic bearings so first we are going to see that various designation of the magnetic bearing that is a WCB. WCB is nothing but a whole circle bearing. What is whole circle bearing? Any angle which is measured in a clockwise from north direction in from north pole in a clockwise direction toward the survey line that angle is called as a whole circle bearing and whole circle bearing is always in between 0 degree to 360 degree. Next is a quadrantal bearing. The quadrantal bearing is nothing but bearing. The bearing which is measured from a north pole or a south pole, magnetic north or magnetic south pole in a clockwise direction or in anti-clockwise direction, whichever is the nearest. That bearing is called as a quadrantal bearing. Here you can see that line AB. Okay, we are going to measure angle from a north pole, magnetic north. And from that, suppose if you are going to measure the angle theta 1, that angle is called as a quadrant in bearing. Similar way, but in quadrantal bearing, we have to specify the quadrant. Okay, here similarly, when you are going to measure the bearing of line AC, we can measure the bearing of line AC from north and south as per definition of quadrantal bearing. But whichever is the nearest, so from here south to C line is a nearest. So theta 2 is here quadrantal bearing, but we have to specify the quadrant for theta 2 that is south theta 2 east. Like this, we are going to measure the bearings. Next is the reduced bearing. The conversion of the magnetic bearing into quadrantal bearing is called as a reduced bearing. Next important thing is a fore bearing and back bearing. Whenever we are going to measure the angle between the between the lines first we have to measure the four bearing the any bearing which is measured in the progress of survey line that bearing is called as a four bearing suppose here we have placed the prismatic compass at station a initially we have 
to match take the prismatic compass exactly at a north direction and with the help of the needle and then we are going to move the compass in a clockwise direction towards the station B where we are going to place the ranging rod and that bearing we are going to call it as a four bearing similar way when you are going to measure the bearing opposite of the progress of the survey line that bearing is called as a back bearings a to b when you are going to measure the angle that is four bearing and when we are going to measure angle from b to a that bearing is called as a back bearing and next technical terms are the declination magnetic declination what is magnetic declination the angle between the true meridian and the magnetic meridian is called as a magnetic declination and magnetic declination may be at east magnetic declination may be west so and next is a isogonic and agonic lines what is mean by isogonic lines the line which are passing from the same declinations those lines are called as isogonic lines and agonic lines the lines which are passing from the zero de declination those lines are called as agonic lines what are the various use of surveying uh, use of sorry, use of theodolite that we are going to see in the next lecture